rundown. We are here. The best show on the internet about speed running. I'm happy to introduce my two co-hosts. Some people call them the two, two dads. I'm, I'm the mm-hmm. two dads plus one actual dad. Simply, how you feeling today? I'm feeling amazing. Feeling like a, an actual dad. Thank you very much. Exactly. Cheese, how you feeling? I am feeling like a dad as well. Dad I'm life. so glad to be back. Glad, nice to be here. Nice to have everyone here with us. Thank you. Let's jump into the hot topics in the speedrunning okay. world. First one I want to talk about is, let's get right into it. We can, we can jump, beat around the bush all we want. But we have a new world record holder in the world of the speedrunning, which is a very hot record. Uh, Super Mario 64. Cheese. Bopping off with that one. How are you feeling, my friend, now with you get the hottest record in speedrunning? <laughs> uh arguably but uh it feels good um this is i think i don't know if it's as long as how it's probably i think it's longer than what 39 the 139 era took but like you know i've been going for 138 like seriously for a little bit more than a year now so like it uh when i started going for 139 i think it was a little bit less than a year that it took about nine months to get that time and I remember that. I would never forget the 139 era. And now the 138 took a little bit longer and it was even more uh, of a journey. Um, it was a little bit weird, or at least when I first, when I got the time, uh, my initial reaction was much more of like, it was like an instant relaxation uh, feeling that I got. As opposed to like every time I got world record since 139, it was much more of like a pop-off kind of thing, you know? It's like, yeah, you know? And of course, the infamous I'm a legend <laughs> thing that I was popping off when I got the 139.28. Um, but this 138 time was much more of like, uh, I instantly felt like relaxed. It was crazy. It was a weird feeling. But um, it was new, but I like it. It was more of, it was it was more relaxing. And, and if you listen to the VOD, there was, the first thing I said after I got the time was like, uh, do you guys remember the Kung Fu Panda scene <laughs> yeah, where Master Fu Shifu, <laughs> dude, Fu Panda when he Master off. Shifu, when he just laid down in total peace, knowing that the evil guy was defeated, was defeated. That's how I felt. Like that's the first thing that came in my mind was that scene. I just felt completely relaxed. It was crazy. But um, with that said, Liam King's Punky and Paracusia, they're PBing and they're getting very close. So it looks like I might have to return pretty soon. Who knows? so is it is it put to rest for now until somebody beats it are you content with the 138.51 until somebody beats it what do you feel about the actual time and the run um to be honest i don't think i ever feel absolutely content i might feel content for a time but um it's 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 more like a journey that doesn't really have an end until it's weird because people ask me, geez, do you see your speed run, yourself speed running in 20 years? It's like, yeah. <laughs> but just, and it, yeah, my mind wants to say yes, but like initial response is like, no, nah, probably not. But my, in my mind, I'm like, you know, there's no reason to stop until there's a really good reason to not play anymore or unless I can't physically play anymore. Um, not only Mario, of course. Mario 64 is going to get to a point where I probably just really burn out officially. Um, I can't tell you when, though. So, like, for now, it's, yeah, it's still pump, dude. Pump time. <laughs> it's all about if somebody, get, if somebody gets close or beats my time, I'm going to come back and try to beat it until whenever. Until no one tries to beat it anymore, and then I guess that might be the end. The one no one thing- could say when that so. It was fun for me to watch is because you know obviously everyone knows cheese with the Bowser throats. So oh, oh, here it goes. It's gonna we'll see if he does it or not. But they they <laughs> they went off so smoothly. It was like it was never in question. Kind of if you saw that if everyone you know if you watched the video, it was just like it was the smoothest Bowser throws ever. Uh, so w- before that, before you got to the Bowser throws, I guess how much were you thinking about it? Did you try just to okay, it's just another run here, or did were you feeling it? You know how bad were you feeling it? Like oh, I got it. Can't mess up these throws here. Um. I remember I, most of the runs, and there were probably over 20 runs, literally speaking, about 20 or so runs at least that got to Bows in the Sky on, on World Record or 138 pace in the past year that I've lost to either Sky or Bowser Throws. Uh, it, I, that, that thought process did come in my mind as soon as I entered the pipe of, oh, 
Oh, crap. Here we go again. <laughs> Literally. But this time I did have a moment right before grabbing Bowser, right before mashing, like reading the text of Bowser, where I took this deep breath um, and told myself, like, breathe, relax. Um, and it was a purpose. It was a purposeful breath. Um, and it might have helped me, it might not have helped me, but I did notice that that was something I did different. I, do, I didn't usually ever do that. I just kind of like was nervous and trying. But this time I actually took a deep breath and I tried to force myself to relax. And it might have helped. No one could say it, but I did notice that I did that. And it maybe helped me. Well, you did it. You clutched it out. The 138 is done. 137 might possibly be in the future. Most likely, probably, knowing Mario, that game just keeps going. Most likely. But I, I want to know, what is the plan now? You've got the 138, so you're big chilling. So what what is in your sights in terms of streaming? You're obviously, you know, the stream is going off. You're blowing up. You're getting the subs. It's wonderful. What's the move? Well, I have lots of plans for the rest of this year. Uh, I've been talking about it, but uh, Ocarina of Time 100% will be back in action soon enough. Uh, nonstop 120 star. I that is probably that's I'm I just started learning it again two days ago. Uh, I need to get by my world record for the nonstop 120 star category. Um, people love that too. I don't know. People love the nonstop. Um, what else? Those are my two main focuses, and I would imagine that somewhere late this year I would probably want to get back, try to get by the what 70 star world record. Um, because why not? Uh, I might as well try, and um. Chopange, who's boss. <laughs> um, with that said, I have been having a little bit of issues and, and worry with my hands and arms. I, as of, it's kind of funny. The day I got 138, later that day is when I started noticing my hand pains coming back. Um, uh, I most a lot of people know already, but uh, last year in November I had serious hand issues after doing that one week Odyssey grind for like twelve hours a day. I went to the psychiatrist. The sorry, psychiatrist. The I'm not going crazy here. <laughs> the physiotherapist, and he was like, "Yeah, I mean, you know, it seems like tendonitis, a form of tendonitis." And they didn't tell me to stop playing though. They just told me, you know, take play less and take maybe a day more off. A week and of course do these icing and heating regimes stretches all the time and simply has been helping me a lot too because simply has gone through worse and it's kind of coming back now so i'm kind of i'm really scared uh to a point where i couldn't sleep today earlier today i was just constantly thinking about it because it you know if you feel like this kind of burning tired sensation all down your arm and you're thinking, this is my career. These are, <laughs> without these, I don't have anything, you know? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, in that sense. Yeah. So I'm kind of freaking out. So I have so many plans, but I have this issue as well. So I have to figure out what am I going to do right now? So I, I'm kind of in a, that situation, but. I guess we should let simply, what do you, what should people do to, 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 to yeah. kind of help this thing that obviously can happen when you stream as much as you guys do and play as much as people do? Not just streamers, but just people playing a game for 12 hours a day. Yeah, so it's been, it's definitely been a journey for me. It's been something I've been battling at this point on and off for almost two years. And it it does not take two years. It's been a lot of learning, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of visiting doctors and, and getting advice that didn't actually do much. So there's a couple resources, and I think I can send them your way, Alt, and then we can get it in the description yep. for people out there. But... I found the biggest thing, and this was pretty recently this year, I started really going hard on the strengthening, and that helped the most. Like, I've been playing more Mario in this month and last month than I have in, like, the past couple of years. So it's coming back. On top of that, you obviously want to be stretching. Uh, it's really important to take breaks and to get the blood flowing. So whenever you get a chance, whenever you reset and you've been playing for about an hour, something like that, take a walk, do some jumping jacks. And apparently... You, you can pop some ibuprofens, Advils, anti-inflammatories, because at the end of the day, tendonitis is an inflamed tendon. So if you are popping those, then 
that can also provide some that would relief. make sense because it literally feels like my arm my forearm is inflamed it felt like an inflamed feeling and when i put ice on it it feels like instant relief yeah ice uh, is a instant relief thing that it can help in the moment but in the long term i found that icing won't do anything um other than for a short-term relief it's really about the yeah. strengthening and the stretching so can you elaborate a little bit on strengthening? Is that like strength? Do you mean like a, there's like a regime, a strengthening practice regime kind of thing? So squeezers, yeah. right? There's like hand strengthener squeezers, right? There's multiple things that I do. I have a video that I can, I'll link in the description uh, for this video. Okay. But like I have one of these from Amazon. I had these finger things. I didn't really like them though. And I go to the gym every other day and I have weights and I just curl and do okay. like these curls and do like these curls. But you do them like off your knee. But yeah, there's a video that explains it a lot better. But every other day, and yeah, it, it, it's definitely a. Right. I would recommend it, especially if you if you're if you're at the point where you're feeling scared, and that's where I was. It, it is scary. Like when I I was speedrunning Mario like six hours a day, and that was taking up most of my day, obviously. And then it just became a huge hole in my life because I eventually was like, all right, I can't do this anymore, and I I was lost. I've I've luckily been able to find some things to keep me entertained keep me engaged and um for better or worse but it's been a journey to say the least yeah and especially for you okay. cheese because you know that would be scary i can understand how scared you might be because hey that's money right for you the playing games is how you get it's, money. it's not you. only it's it's everything yeah. it's it's a uh, it's a uh, apart from that it's a career in a sense of i mean it's it's 90 percent of what i focus my life on energy wise and everything time wise in the past five years and that is in jeopardy. So I have to be very, very, very careful. All right, boys. Well, that's a good talk here. Yeah. Keep that in mind, guys. Listen, people listen out there. It is a serious thing that happens to a lot of people. So don't just think it won't happen to you because it can't happen to you. Um, yeah. Let's move on to more happy news, summer news. Um, you guys, Cheese has been popping off with going to the events and stuff. You read the GDQ. You went to ESA. We're talking to Eden all a little bit later on the show. So let's hear what was your ESA, your ESA experience like for you? Okay, ESA, first of all, quality, 10 out of 10. Engagement, 10 out of 10. Um, how do I say? Network, networking availability, 7 out of 10. Okay. Uh, now, the reason for that is, you know, a lot of it has to do with the size of, of the event. But it's because an event like GDQ already exists. So... What, what do I mean by that? Because GDQ exists and it's so much larger at the moment, uh, you, right off the bat, when it comes to like networking, meeting people, growing stream, anything, any sort of networking stuff, that is automatically going to be more in your favor at an event like GDQ because it's like three times bigger, right? Um, with that said, a lot more, I would say most of the people that attend these events aren't really interested in networking in the first place, so it doesn't matter for most people. Um, but quality and uh, event, j just in terms of how the event itself, it is a beautiful, beautiful event. Um, very, 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 uh, how do I say, concentrated in, in, uh, um att attendee uh, um, what's the word participation okay. participation right so there are lots it's uh the place at least the, the current hotel is i think the best location i've ever been to Ooh. uh for any event you leave the train station like okay so people told me it's right outside the train station right because i heard when i first heard it's in sweden and everyone was like, take a plane, take a plane to Copenhagen, which is in Denmark. I'm like, why would I go to Denmark? It's in Sweden. Is it going to take, I don't want to take like a two hour train ride to Sweden. And they're like, no, it's in Malmo, Sweden. It's literally on the coast of Sweden next to Copenhagen. I was like, uh, but I could still take a long, I'll just fly to Sweden. And turns out you reach Copenhagen, Denmark, you take a train right from the airport, literally a five minute train, you cross a bridge and you're in Malmo, Sweden. <laughs> And you leave the train station of Malmo, Sweden. And as soon as you get up the stairs from the train station, the hotel is in front of you. Wow. <laughs> it's the most perfect location I've ever seen. And it's it's almost inside of a mall. It's it's amazing. 
Now, the venue itself is very, it's everything is concentrated. The whole event was concentrated in this one space. So you could see everyone and everything where you are in the same place. Uh, now, most DDQs, everything is much more separated. You, you have the stream room, you walk to the other side of the hotel for like five minutes, and then you finally reach the practice room, right? Yeah. Now, a lot of it is a bit complicated because bigger events, you know, that kind of stuff is kind of unavoidable. But long story short, if you're looking for a very high quality focused on uh, product, amazing high quality production, and not only high quality, but more modern production, because the entire event of ESA was done on flat screens. They did not use a single CRT at ESA. Okay. Not a single run was played on CRT. I did my run on a flat screen. And of course, I was terrified when they told me, are you going to play on an LED? And I'm like, dude, not this again. <laughs> like, I don't want to get a 150 on the screen today. I, I can't play with lag, blah, 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 blah. And they were like, no, don't worry. Trust me, we have a good system. We, we're, we're using um, really good monitors. And basically, they had an RB, RGB setup where they use the OSSC um, box, where they have RGB modded N64. They put that into the the converter, which is the... OSSC, HDMI into the uh, monitor, complete HDMI setup. And it felt good. I, w- I played, I was playing on the monitor and it felt good. And I did really well on my run. I got, I almost beat my best marathon time. So, and I was, I was, I was shocked. I learned a lot from that event. I was like, wow, you know, speedrunning can actually be played, you know, can progress into the modern kind of like technology stage with LEDs. And hopefully this is a, this is a good thing. Cause sometimes I think about, sometimes I get scared about CRTs, because CRTs are going to get a point where it's like, it's going to be too hard to find CRTs, right? Yep. It's going to be very unreliable. So that Definitely. was something that really opened my mind, uh, my eyes, and I was really glad that ESA was able to pull that off really well. And just a very high quality event. Very, very, very good. I really enjoyed it. Cool. I can't imagine what it's like playing on an LED. I mean, I played on an LCD. That was pretty good, but an LED it must be some advanced stuff. <laughs> <laughs> next level skills required uh, I've got uh, this this ESA for sure more than any other one uh, American runners came out and talked about how great it was like you had TGH was popping off on Twitter Big John went mm-hmm. insane about the praise and you did as well yeah. um, so I mean that's that's ought to be something big for them did, did you uh, was there any kind of did, did you did, was there because you were kind of like I one of the biggest street streamers there for sure I would say in in terms of names uh, and you and TGH and B John all three of them were kind of big big guys um so what was it like the reaction people had for you were there was it a lot of just only runners at this event or was it a lot of fans just watching an event what, what kind of was it like there at the event I mean it was pretty similar to GDQ uh, there were fans and tons of people that would uh, sometimes I would walk past. And I would hear people saying to each other, not to me, be like, mm. oh my God, it's cheese. It's cheese. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I could hear that. And then it's like, should I look? Should I say something? But the oh. same thing happens at GDQs. It's the same environment. Um, and it, it's it's just most people being nervous to talk, to approach people. And that's, that's common. That, that would happen. Mm-hmm. But... Um, it was also completely... It's completely different. Um, the European community, like it, it, most about ninety five percent of the people that I saw at ESA, I never saw before. I never seen the GDQs. It's like it's crazy how e- connected ESA is, and ESA is like their own. Uh, it's literally like Europe, and then it's America. Uh, hopefully, in the future, we'll, there will be more integration. But um, you know, it's difficult when flights can get expensive and stuff. Yeah. But um, it, it is pretty crazy how um, ESA. It's 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 in own in its own kind of world and it really they really are kind of two separate worlds um, the north american scene and the european scene uh, but then again but then online everyone's together so but there you go all right well, we're gonna obviously we're gonna talk about esa is awesome it sounds like you had a great time we are going to talk to the creator the inventor of esa Edenall, in an interview coming up we're on the other side of this so stay tuned for that what is up, everybody? We have got a very special guest, Eden All, the man, the myth, arguably the legend behind ESA. It just wrapped up. It was beautiful. The production value off the chain, um, some might say. But how was it for you on your end, Eden All? What are your thoughts? 
thank you, Big Sim. That was one mighty introduction. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, ESA was it was a blast. It was so good. Uh, we we set a few PBs. Uh, we raised more mother money than ever. Uh, we set new records for viewership. I think we set a new record for paste bins where people claim that it was the best event ever. <laughs> so that's good. That's really good. Um, I, I really love how ESA really captures the grassroots feeling. Um, mm -hmm. Still at over, I think we had something, something, 700 visitors in total. And still, like, everyone's there. Everyone's chilling. Everyone's being friendly with everybody. It was top-notch event. Definitely. Awesome. So I want to ask, and something that Cheese brought up when I talked to him about ESA, he's like, I mean, when we go to the GDQs, you're really just there to hang out with the people. The event, a lot of players are, it's kind of in the back of their head, but Cheese was like, nah, ESA, it's all about the event. Everybody is all in for the event. That is very engaging. So how do you, as an event coordinator, as a creator, get that sort of vibe going at an event? I think it's about you need to provide options. Um, you need, and, and we I think we do that better than any other event. Uh, we do the arcade room, uh, which is downstairs with a mix of rhythm games, racers, uh, candy cabs, uh, lots of pinballs. Um, this year, for the first time, we had a tournament room, uh, which was run by Speed Gaming and Fiesel. So there was always like a new tournament. There was fight. There were fighting games. There were Grand Grand Theft Auto. There were a Link to the Past. It was everything. Um, Yu Gi Oh. I, I don't know. They, they played so many games. You could sign up and do. And he would do tournament for it. Uh, board games. Like there was a. I think there were over a hundred board games there, and that room was filled, all the time. Big big flexi space. Uh, we had this large breakout area where you can go and chill out drink coffee tea ice cream popcorn all in the house of course Ooh, um, yeah. so there were a lot, a lot of people just hanging out there instead of like going up to the rooms uh even though i mean you could get to your room and just elevator pop upstairs and if you want to go, go have a party or you go downstairs to the hotel uh, bar which unfortunately closed at uh 11 p.m this year, but we're going to fix that for next year. <laughs> nice. Well, I mean, cool. if you wanted to, if you're a streamer and want to stream, we got that fixed for you too. Uh, we got streaming stations where you can actually stream. You don't need to bring anything. You just get in there. You're hooked up with camera, microphone, computer, uh, not console, but capture equipment. You just sit down and stream. Wow. And of course, there's like practice area in the middle of everywhere. Uh, there's uh, TVs, there's computers, um, you, and the two streams. You can watch the two streams. Yeah, that's pretty cool as well. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously. Like... I, I, I think that's really like what makes ESA so special. It's more of a festival rather than one little room here, one little room there. Some people over here. Mm. Um, everyone just hangs out in the same space. Yeah. And it, I mean, obviously, Cheese was talked about this too. We just talked to Cheese on this episode as well, and he was talking about how everything about it is is beautiful. The location is like incredible because you just get off the train or whatever, and you're like right there, and uh, just everything is, seems to be like, hey, this is for the runners. We're gonna make it the best for the runners we can. And obviously, it worked because you got some people there that uh, some big names were there that never came before, and obviously, like everyone else, just talked about how be beautiful it was. Uh, one cool uh, moment that I want to talk about is Big John and the and the and the putt putt stuff. I think that's worth talking about because it sounds silly, but <laughs> that was kind of really triumphant moment, right? And uh, can you talk about the genesis of that? What kind of went into making that decision to hey, let's make this a last minute donation goal thing? You know, I, I wish I could tell you I wasn't there. Oh, okay. <laughs> some, people, some people are just like, well, we added this incentive. It's cool, right? And I was like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Big John said we could do it. Um, that, that whole, like, uh, golf thing, make golf great again, make golf happen. I don't know what the hashtag was, but it was, it was so much fun. Like, people pushed it. Uh, donation readers, hosts. Other runners, Big John himself, he had a run just before the golf game. Um, and it made me kind of realize the potential of adding impromptu 
goals like that mm-hmm. and how important it is for, for our event that we can we can do that. Um, that was not the only example. We did the same thing uh, with, with Cheese later in the marathon. Uh, for $10,000, he would play a 16-star run after his uh, 120 run. And that was the same thing there. Once you build up the momentum, it just it just goes by itself. Um, I was never worried about hitting any of those goals, even though we we raised eighty six thousand dollars, and those two incentives were fifteen thousand. <laughs> so they're quite quite large uh, incentives. Definitely. Um, but once you get in the in the flow. Um, it, it just it brings so much extra energy to to everyone uh, around. That's the stream really becomes a much more fun place to be when you're trying to achieve some. You're you're, you're chasing something. You're chasing this lucrative goal or target. Um, it's it's more fun for everyone. And I think my, I think both Cheese and John really, really enjoyed it. John was happy about finally playing golf on street. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so how about, uh, just real quick, what about some things about, you know, because obviously this is all positive and obviously everything was awesome. But how about you as an organizer? Is there anything behind the scenes you could share with us that kind of was difficult that we couldn't even see? Like maybe there's some last-minute problems or anything you had to go through? Any, any, any hiccups during the week that we, obviously we didn't see on the stream, but that you maybe you saw that you had to deal with? Uh, you know, we sit down every morning. Um, every morning, all the organizers meet at 10 a.m. after breakfast. We go through, like, the last day, see what's happened, try to fix any of the uh, any of the issues or plan for anything that's coming up in the next one or two days. Um, I mean, the, the real big thing we screwed up on this event was the lack of gaming PCs. Uh, we, we made a decision to invest in buying 20 new gaming pieces state of top top of line like play any game 60 fps 1080p that's a big cost i mean that's 20 you know yeah. what I mean? that's not that's not joke that's joke. a big yeah. cost that, that's no that, that's no joke um that's um the story about those pieces is a fun story for another day but it, it involves some quite in complicated importing uh, uh <laughs> shenanigans <laughs> okay um the eu is a very weird place um, but anyway, so we had these 20 pieces on top of whatever pieces we had from before. Uh, what we failed to account for was that Infodesk needs PCs, scheduling needs PCs, uh, admins need PCs, so, and the tournament room needed PCs, and all the streams need PCs, and the streaming area need PCs. Shit. <laughs> we don't have enough. Uh, so, um, what what happened there was uh, a lot of we thought we had enough or at least barely enough but some of the gaming pc pool had to come out to do other stuff which weren't gaming pc related uh which would have been better suited with a chromebook or something like that uh mm. so that was a little bit of a mistake and uh, as, um there were like um some of the gaming pcs were allocated for swat a 10 player pc co-op game um <laughs> and they were never really properly returned to the <laughs> pc area after that uh um that's rough uh but we 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 got a pretty solid plan to fix that we're we're going to slowly continue to increase the stock of gaming pcs we're not going to do 20 more for winter obviously but maybe mm-hmm. like five seven or like 10 more and then mm-hmm. another 10 for next summer and suddenly like get some chromebooks and then suddenly we're going to have 50 gaming pcs wow just like that <laughs> um, live and learn yeah. and some people weren't a fan of the streams in, in the same room but that that's a hill i'm prepared to die on i <laughs> think that's i think that's easy um it brings up the value of the second stream to beyond just the stream with the games that didn't fit on stream one it, it's it's not like that it's, it's never been like that the second stream is a complementary stream so if there's um platformer on stream one there's an rpg on stream two and vice versa uh rts what's the opposite of rts i, I don't know but <laughs> you, you know it, it's mario here and it's sonic there mm. um I, I 
I absolutely love that. There's small things like uh, street boys making a lot of noise. I thought it was pretty cool. Like it showed that there there's energy and things happening in the venue. Um, I mean, and th there's also the um, the the infam now infamous Resident Evil run, which was just unfortunate. Um, I know you. Were, I, so how about why? And for me, I don't want to get too crazy here, but I was I, I, my Discord. I was saying, uh, I was saying like, this run is kind of in a weird place here. I'm not sure if it's gonna go good or bad, but <laughs> I think in the end it kind of turned to be good because it was kind of guys on the couch together, obviously having a relationship with friends, kind of make it make it fun of each other. I and mean, no, that's cool. That's 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 friends, right? So but I obviously I no uh, ESA didn't see it that way. So could just a little bit of elaboration there. Like was it was it just just let me know the main reason that that decided hey this had to be bad. Was it the was it the kind of making fun of the runner too much and but the, was it the kind of the the joke the joke quality what 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 was the reason the the final reason? Any one any one joke or instance or any one thing in that run was nothing. Mm -hmm. Them all together was way too much. And it came to the point where the chat turned against them. Mm -hmm. And that was very, very early on in the run. Um, I, I think um, had this run happened three hours later in the day when me or Planks would have been awake or someone else from the seniors organizers group yeah uh, we would have been able to stop the run um because we saw straight away that this this wasn't what we have in mind for for esa and mm -hmm. it doesn't represent what we it doesn't represent esa essentially mm -hmm. okay. um and what kind of made it worse was the people that were supposed that we would trust to stop it were taking part of the action. Okay. Being senior volunteers or volunteers knowing full well what standards we have for ESA. Uh, and I would encourage anyone to go back to the opening speech of ESA Winter 18, um, where we clearly outline, and this is a speech uh, and code of conduct everyone should be aware of. And everyone will have been informed about this code of conduct. And it's not... if. It's just the way it is. It's super unfortunate. I feel really bad for everyone involved. But we cannot accept this behavior at the ESA. That's fair. And I think what I appreciate about you guys is that you are at least more transparent about it. You know, you issued a statement and all this instead of like it just happens and then no one's quite sure oh, what happened. Why did this go on? So I can definitely appreciate that. But we don't have too much time. I want to ask, what are your favorite runs from ESA? You know. Oh, how much time do you have? Okay, I'm gonna do a quick, quick, uh, <laughs> quick fire. Yeah. Quick, rattle them off. You need to watch the crowd control run with TGH. Uh, a link to the past. Never before have crowd control been used in a stream with this many viewers. The crowd control guys were super helpful, and they've been working on this for months, implementing a system where uh, the what do you call it? bounties or um, effects mm -hmm. scale? So if I put in a thousand or two thousand bits to kill TGH, next time it's four thousand, next time it's six thousand, or something like that. Yeah. And there's a cooldown, uh, so people got really creative with ways to kill TGH. Um, <laughs> not just insta deaths. You you would do like ice physics, uh, one hit kill, uh, and angry chickens. <laughs> <laughs> and drop a bomb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so people got got really great creative with that, and that was that was really fun. He got a lot of help too from from the crowd. Uh, if you haven't watched the twenty dollar percent uh, with Jakusa, you should. It was on the second stream. It's Ooh. essentially live crowd control. Um, people donate, and we implement what they ask for in a stream. So like. Crowd do dancing. Uh, runner flip the screen upside down. Stuff like that. Silly <laughs> things. It, yeah, it's, yeah. it's super fun. Uh, the awful block. Um, the entire awful block was really great. Um, maybe uh, 
well, you have Dora the Explorer, super good run. Very good meme game. Uh, Paris Marseille Racing. Uh, full French. The, the French guys went all out with baguettes and everything. Street Boys. For so much noise they made, that they were a really big crowd grinding that game for ILs all week. Uh, it was fun, really fun. Uh, Taskbot made, made its uh, appearance at the ESA for the first time. The legit task box with Drango. Uh, it was really fun seeing him backstage coding, uh, implementing the Discord hack. Uh, I had a really good time watching Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a very good run. Uh, the, the ending indie block with Kusu Inc. refunct and v -v 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 <laughs> super solid indie block. Um, and of course, the Super Mario Sunshine Relay as the finale. Uh, that's kind of a staple of the ESA Summer events. Crazy relay races. And of course, the Mega Man Relay Race by uh, organized by Corvus. Uh, three teams, uh, one stage per player. It was really close at the end. Uh, very, very well executed. So there's a lot of runs to watch. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would say like um what the one that you know some of the magic of marathons is you like you turn it on and you're not sure I'm not sure who this runner is and I've never played this game but let me just check it out and uh, it turned out to be like awesome. And one of the ones for me was like The Last of Us and a lot of people are talking about this online too. I don't know what about that run yes. but it was just beautiful. Uh, it was just a beautiful run. The run was cool. The couch and and, and runner are popping off. Just beautiful chemistry there. That was just a great run for me. So that's my recommendation that there. Um. Do want to get to, obviously, ESA was awesome, incredible, and to finish this awesome interview about it, we've heard you have some news to share with the beautiful viewers out there. So what, what, what is that about? Oh, you know, yeah. Let us know. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, we're going to, or rather, we have recruited uh, another organizer for ESA. Uh, since this won't go live until Tuesday, uh, and it, the news goes public tomorrow, Monday, uh, do you have any guesses? Who so it's someone you hire to do a job? Can you give us what's the, what's the job? Is it just an organizer or what? What? Uh, it's what, a new. It's an organizer that will take place at the organizer's table together with me, Planks, Fatske, and Rasmus. Okay, um, so big, big, big spot, a big spot for sure. It's it's yeah, it's the biggest biggest spot you can get. Uh, <laughs> this person will be uh, responsible for fundraising. It will be his or her job to coordinate and make fundraising even better as you say well if you say that it has to be a pretty big name or we wouldn't be able to guess it so uh i would say how about someone oh simply i'll let you go first then before i say it what's, what's your guess i'm going to guess the glamic okay then. <laughs> good guess i am going to guess that's would not raise it. a lot of money. <laughs> that, he, that's not it, but it would be awesome. I would say, what about someone that was at the event? Uh, how about how about my man Feasel, who might be down with no. something like that? What do you think? No, okay, you got to share it with us no. then. Metaco. Okay, 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 nice. The creator of the twenty dollar percent. Mm, so, what was the? impetus to it is this something you guys talk about for a long time are you looking for somebody or kind of said hey this guy's too good we got to give him on the team yes we, we've been looking to fill this spot for the past two years uh, okay oh wow but it hasn't really been the right person hasn't been available until now awesome awesome um, metaka did a lot of stuff behind the scenes uh, at this event he uh coordinated the streaming area he helped out with um he helped out with a lot of things that you didn't see but he was he's been active for a while and we feel like this is the right time and he compliments the the rest of the donation and hosting team very 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 well he obviously got their blessings before asking him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. metaco in the house congratulations on that last question has got to be what's the future hold for esa what are we looking forward to next what's our next big thing oh and the next big plan thing is winter uh we got winter and summer lined up both in Malmo again, same venue. Nothing changes. We'll still be comfy. So, I mean, if you're looking for a cool speedrunning event to go to, this is it. I've never been to Europe. I don't know. I might need to, <laughs> might need to stop by. The rave reviews, man. It sounds <laughs> yeah. like a good time. Yeah. Um, we're looking into doing something in November uh, for Movember, but we haven't really 
finalized any plans yet. Um, but that should be happening very, very soon. Personally, I really like to get into content creating uh, on YouTube. Uh, in the past, I have a few like series or in mind that I want to do ESA related, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I really won't have time to do anything with that until October. Um, as ESA keeps growing, I mean, it's really hard to balance like the grassroots with the growth. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we're doing a pretty, pretty solid job. Um, me and Planks have been working on like on another type of event that's really not speed running, but still speed running, but Ooh. more, 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 more towards variety, um, charity focused. Uh, it's still not left the drawing table yet, but hopefully we'll be able to do uh, put this into action and execute on it soon. Ooh, um, okay. I mean, the, the future for me, the next couple of months or half year six months um i'll be running the arcade uh in vecco and i'll be spending a lot of time with sponsors looking for new sponsorship new marketing opportunities partnerships um so if anyone out there want to work want to work with esa like hit me up we'll make hit something up. happen hit them up esa uh, you, your twitter is eat and all SGA, as you can see on the screen there. Also, we should talk about that. Uh, uh, what's it called? B B BSG is going on right now, right? On the ESA channels, right? Yes. For the next week, uh, one of the partner events, or uh, BSG is really part of the Euro organize Euro Marathon crew. Um, they their their events are really really solid. Um, so one of the one of the big small events, I would say. Oh, they're yeah, quite definitely. big now. They they've been growing so fast, and they're they're moving into hotel for the first time now. And I think that's really when most events really, really grow. Really, really, what's the word? Explode. Take off. Explode, yeah. Take yeah. off. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> it takes to a whole other level now, especially because there's so many online marathons now. That's tough to make a difference. And when you have a lot of events, it just makes that difference. But Eden all, you were great today. ESA was great. A lot of glowing reviews. Can't go much better than it's going now. Everything's looking out for Eden All and ESA. Last word, simply, send us home. It has been a pleasure, my man. Looking forward to see what ESA has in store. You guys have an insane track record, and um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the growth, seeing what comes through the gate. That YouTube exclusive stuff sounds hot. I definitely think that's a good idea. You've got to capitalize. And yeah, thank you so much for sitting down and talking with us. And I'll catch you on the flippity flip, my man. Thank you. And I'll see you uh, hopefully at AGDQ or AGDQ maybe. There we go. I will I will be at AGDQ. <laughs> I'll see you at AGDQ yes. then. All right. Peace. See you, man. Cheers. <laughs> all right, guys. That was the interview with Eden All. Thanks for coming on for your time. That was awesome. ESA is a great thing, and I would definitely want to go there one day, hopefully, but we'll see. Um, but here we go. Let's get into a topic that I think is near and dear to – I don't think it's near and dear to anyone's heart, but it's, it's definitely a hot topic in the speedrunning <laughs> world right now, and that is world record culture. And uh, that's been talked about for a long time, but now it's kind of reached a fever pitch online with a lot of stuff. Um, the thing that kind of made me want to say, okay, we got to talk about it now, is TGH had a tweet that said, what is, what is with this culture? I get that people want to see competition, and that's great, but this is stupid. And the thing he's referring to that is stupid is on a public discord, someone said to Marlon, the new world record holder of Celeste, please do me the favor and continue trying to beat TGH's world record if he gets it back. Please keep trying to keep trying to get it back, right? And that kind of set TGH off in a kind of a, a negative, feeling bad about that. Um, so I guess I'll start with you simply. What, do you, what are your thoughts on world, world record culture uh, at the moment? I think, I mean, I don't feel like it's that way at all in Mario 64. Like, Cheese gets a world record. Everybody's, you know, very excited. Obviously, it's always fun to have healthy competition. It, it helps all the people compete in. So, Liam King's getting closer and people egging him on to be like, oh, you got to beat Cheese. And it, it's everybody's hype. And I'm sure Cheese as well is hype to have a world record beaten. And I wonder how TGH feels about it because TGH has been the Celeste man for so long. So now he's finally been dethroned, uh, and it doesn't – not to say that he can't get it back, but I don't know. I mean, I don't – I personally don't find that to be a, a very offensive thing. I'm kind of surprised by the tweet a little bit that he's um, 
I, but it, it has been, it's not just that. I don't think it's just the tweet. It just seems no, like in general, more. there's been these sort of things going on. Cheese seems to have a lead. So we'll let our lead reporter take, a, oh, yeah. take us down. He's, he's hot. He's burning us, that seat. In. He's burning up. Get, <laughs> give us something. Um, no, well, TGH has had experience. He's had a lot uh, since the last bit kind of came out. Uh, more than a year ago, he's been um, having people just hate on him or talk um, smack about him in a sense of like uh, basically people being kind of sad or triggered that he's the number one personality, I guess you could say, in the community in, in for Celeste because he's always been he's been a professional streamer. He streams full time, and when somebody streams full time. They're gonna try their best to make their stream uh, more popular. I mean, that's their number one goal, right? And of course, they're gonna work hard in the game too. They want to be the best player, and that's gonna help them too. So a lot of people uh, um, just tend to get jealous. That's all it really is at the end of the day. Because what else can it be? Because I know TGH well, and TGH does not ever go out of his way to talk. Uh, badly about anyone he tries his best to keep the community as as close as together um mm -hmm. so when he sees these things that's why he he gets confused and he probably gets a uh, you know and sometimes you could act, react emotionally when you get fed up because he's wondering why do people do this if i'm trying my best to be a leader in the community it's 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 100 jealousy and that's what it always is when people talk about how much they hate this world record culture and it it's there it's them trying to find something a way to get people on their side because they're just hating on a certain person for being the best at something or being popular um but that's not all the cases right there there are people like that but you can't avoid that either um I saw when simply mentioned about like when people are like, "Oh, Liam Kings, you need to be a cheese," and like, that is that's called competition. Of course, everyone knows what mm -hmm. that's like. It's a competition thing. Of course, that that's all about the. Uh, when I see that, I I want to see that too. I want to see people being like, "Dude, Liam Kings getting close. It's gonna motivate me, right?" Um, but uh, that's my take on it so far. Uh, and one more thing, I guess, to add to that is when people, I, I saw people complain. Talk about world record culture and then complain about the viewers or, or Twitch viewers. And they would say like stream monsters or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why on earth are you taking stream monsters seriously? <laughs> you're, you're calling them stream monsters, but you're taking them seriously? That's you know, the there's first no, <laughs> Yeah, there's no need. It, it, the worst thing you could do is take viewers that more than likely don't even know anyone else in the community but who they're watching. Seriously, don't you can't take those people seriously. They they're going to just try to be on the streamer side, so they would say anything that, that would hurt the community. You can't take those people seriously. That's that's the number one probably. <laughs> but I think that's my view on it so far. Uh, I don't have much more knowledge or uh, in depth knowledge about world record culture and stuff because I mean I don't think it's really good to focus on that kind of stuff either too much. I saw um I saw a cool quote that said haters aren't hating anybody. What they're really doing is they feel the fear that they'll never be as good as that person. And I think that's definitely the case. But that said, yes. that doesn't make it easier for TGH to see that. I know that. Because I know TGH, is, I've talked to him a few times now, and I know he really cares about his community and cares about being a nice guy. I mean, he's not a douchebag guy. And uh, it sucks that it happened to him, that people feel that about him, because but however, we do see this in all sports, right, guys? Like so, when the, the yeah, and it's, it's and it's not easy for any top player to see that. Yeah, like yeah. You, said. you know, when when Dallas Cowboys are the best football team in the in the in the league for three years in a row, whatever people you see these stick people have like bumper stickers now that said "F the Cowboys," and it's just anyone <laughs> anyone but the Cowboys are literally bumper stickers you can buy. Anyone but the Cowboys, <laughs> right? So this is a normal thing that happens in sports, right? And I'm not saying it makes it a good thing. I'm saying this is something that happens when people are passionate about people or teams. And I actually think this is a good sign because it shows that people are starting to get passionate about people and about kind of teams. If remember, team running, speed running doesn't have teams. We have, you know, players, right? We're kind of more of a singular mm -hmm. thing like tennis or something like that. So I'm not saying I like to see it, but I do like to see the passion coming up. Like, hey, my guy's cheese. And when Punky takes his record, I want cheese to get it back. And I, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that gets that kind of like, F Punk A or anything. 
But I know that sports has those kind of people. So if, if they do exist, as long as you don't take them seriously, like, you, I know, like, for me, I don't like anyone that says, like, I, I hate anyone because they're winning. I mean, I think it's a stupid opinion in general. But there are people that mm-hmm. have that. So I just say let them be, right? That's I don't know if that's world record culture exactly, but I think it's... Yeah, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly yeah, what, you, you know, what, what, what it means, what comes with it. I think it's I, I I think it's kind of cool to see this kind of passion come out and say, Definitely. "Man, Marlon, I want you to I, I wish Marlon had the world record right now. I, I I'm tired of TGH up there." And now he, Marlon <laughs> could just say whatever. I mean, this guy's a douchebag. I don't care about this guy's opinion, but I like to see that passion mm. from that guy, even if it is kind of misplaced, right? I would rather would you rather him say, "Hey, do your best, Marlon. Do your best, TGH." Yeah, but come on, that's not real world. <laughs> you know, that's not the internet. It's not, well, not, not only that, not only that, but that's it's not going to happen anyway. Even if people <laughs> pretended like they wanted it to happen, it's not going to happen. That's not how the that's not how the world works. Yeah. And uh, if people are going to set themselves out to believe that that it should work like that, I'm, then I'm sorry. It's, 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 welcome to the real world. <laughs> no, this is the hardcore speedrunning yeah. community. No, I'm just kidding. I don't want it to be like that. I don't want it to be like that, by the way. I, well, I love I love how most of speedrunning is very community based. Yeah, I yeah. love that. But, but I want it to be like you, that. You you <laughs> you cannot avoid those people though. It yeah. will happen no matter what. And the last point for me. Last point for me for you to hi YouTube. Last point. Um, this thought that some people i saw some people many people say this and this really got me got me rolling my blood is boiling on this one people <laughs> were, people were saying this to stuff about the viewers like viewers should not care about who's doing better who's getting the world record and stuff no streamer can choose how a viewer enjoys speed running streams anything so whatever you put out there whatever someone gets from that that's their choice they can if can they if uh, i like watching cheese I'm... stream because i like what his michael jackson uh, you know what it's called the, the the thing when you get a donation. That's the only the, thing I like. Yeah, That's my learn. choice, right? Don't tell people how to enjoy something. That really gets me going because anyone can enjoy anything for any reason, and no one should be made made fun of or say it's the right way to enjoy it. Whatever, right? So can you can you give an example? Of, like okay, of what, what, how does someone about? said for example about TGH? Someone said this is so disgusting. World record culture is so disgusting. Speed running. Uh, in, enjoying the downfall of others should not be what you get enjoyment from or whatever. Like, uh, you know, uh, rooting for someone else to overtake someone else should not be what you're rooting for. You should be rooting for that person to improve. That's not how it works. Some people yeah, might do that, but some people might like, like fantasy that. land. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not like this, of course, but some people might be, I can't wait to see TGH lose the world record because that'll be more hype for the community, mm-hmm. right? doesn't mean we're thinking anything bad about TGH himself. And I'll just... tell you one thing right now. Yeah. Uh, people who watch Clint Stevens, right? Everyone know, not everyone, because there are people that don't know anybody else but Clint, so they think he's like the best player. <laughs> but I mean, again, I won't, that won't be avoided. That's not a bad thing either. It's only bad for me when they come and tell me my chat. <laughs> <laughs> but people who watch Clint that know that he's not near the even near the best player yet in that game, doesn't mean he can't be. Um, let's say Clint got amazing and he was now second place and he was about to take my world record all of those all of that mindset would change into oh you gotta be cheese instead of just because right now people watch clint because they want to see him improve and that's it they they don't care about him beating anyone else but if he was second place trying to beat me it would change into oh you have to be cheese Mm -hmm. it's not just about him improving anymore it's about him beating the world record holder and it's that excitement of being right behind the top of course people are going to want to see that it's it's exciting mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah it adds to that point um and some some people some people won't care some people i know super people probably watch punky or liam or me and don't care if i do other work or not they just want to watch me and watch me improve uh, but most people when they reaches that high point of like top three or whatever they want to see that battle of course you, it's it's only in, in human nature to see that competition Simply chime in here. Come on. You got some thoughts going. In terms of people finding enjoyment out of world record or the personality or whatever it may be, at the end of the day, we're all here because we love speed running in some way, yeah. shape, or form. And <laughs> yeah. that's what I think is truly beautiful. <laughs> definitely. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think we got I think we got our points across pretty well on that one. Yeah, just to uh I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm saying well, there's always going to be people that want to see someone else beat someone else. That's sports. And if you don't like that, 
then speedrunning is not sports to you, and then you're just lying to yourself because if you have a timer on there and you're trying to get the fastest timer of anyone else in the world, that's that sounds like a sport to me. So uh, that's a sport, guys. So all right, next topic, guys. Let's try to reel it in here, reel in the hotness. Um, yeah, what time are we at right now? We're at 32, so we have about th- 12, uh, 13 more minutes. Okay. Okay, so uh, last, let's get to one topic I think I want to talk about that we talked about as well. Carl Jobs dropped a bomb of a tweet here. Um, I guess what spawned the tweet we should talk about first. Super Mario Brothers one record is beaten. That is, again, uh, one of the top five hypest records in speedrunning in the world, and I think, personally. Uh, that one that everyone talks about, that makes the Kotaku articles, that gets news. Whenever that world record is beaten, that gets that makes the papers, right? Online papers. Uh, and uh, it was recorded on a potato camera. It was recorded with a webcam. <laughs> Um, it's, it's old school. I mean, it's a, it's a fossil. I said, when I first saw it, it's like seeing a fossil, you got the camera there and then you got the world record. He's popping off. He's excited. Uh, there wasn't even a timer attached to the video. I don't think, but you know, they timed it back and figured it out. It was the world record. And Carl Jobs, legendary golden eye runner, perfect dark runner as well. Don't want to cut him short there. Said this tweet, if speedrunner communities truly cared about growth and exposure, they would disallow anything but direct capture for world record runs. No one mm-hmm. wants to watch a video of a camera pointed at a TV, and these runs will never get the widespread attention they deserve. Cheese, I'll throw it to you first. What do you think about that tweet? What are your thoughts on this whole issue? I do think it's pretty easy, first of all, to get at least decent capture on your stream. It really is not that difficult. I mean, I, he mentioned that he bought, like, uh, he, he linked a video from 2014 when he did like the, the trifecta run <laughs> yeah, that was cool that was cool and he said he bought like ten dollar captures and it was more than good enough for like you know a showcase like that and i would agree with that um i think people should i i have this uh opinion that people should take their quality or at least their stream a little bit more seriously especially if they're taking speedrun seriously i personally don't really understand how can if some, somebody could put so much time into speedrunning <clears throat> and be the best at something and absolutely not put any effort or care whatsoever in their stream to showcase what they're doing. To me, it feels like a, a disconnect. I, I don't know. So I would agree with him on that. But okay, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Sam. That's pretty much Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know the full story. I mean, there's definitely, like, in my case, I was... I had been taking speedrunning pretty seriously, but I was on emulator and it was just a matter of, I didn't have money. Like I, I was young at the time. I didn't have a job, so I couldn't buy anything to like get the setup. And it can be expensive potentially. It depends on where you live. I, when I was in New Zealand, just to get a CRT that wasn't even good, it had input delay. It was like 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. And so that on top of like, I mean, once you have that, it's not that bad, but everything could add up to a couple hundred bucks. It's depending on the game. It could be more than that too. So I sort of sympathize with it a little bit, especially like the idea, like the philosophy of the rich get richer or the poor get poorer. Like if you are already in a position where you're using the webcam and then people probably aren't going to come watch your stream anyway to fund you to get anything else out of it. And like you might just be living, you know, but I don't know if that's the case. Let's say it's not the case. Then absolutely. I don't know what you're doing. Like if you have, if you are on, if you're at the capability of getting a world record, then you are legitimately missing out on a lot of exposure and people coming in and learning about who you are and caring more about what you do just because, yeah. I mean, you aren't caring. So why should people care? Type I, thing. I not only, exactly. And not only that, but like, if you, if you are that good at a game, obviously you've had to spend a lot of time on it. Right. Oh yeah. Amazing. And all, in, all, in, in all of that time, you didn't think of, or maybe you thought I should try at least to, 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 I don't know, to me, this, um, not be an issue at least um i think we, 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 could, we could all be assuming though that he that that maybe he doesn't want to be he, he wants to get the world record <laughs> for a game but he doesn't care who many people see it you know what i mean he doesn't he doesn't care yeah, but yeah. like um but if it if the quality if, it, if in a situation where the quality is so bad and people are arguing about it and it's like oh should we approve this run or not uh at that point it's like um you should probably think about that or but i would say though of course there's always because I'm trying. I I don't I don't want to bring down anybody. I try my best not to because there are people who have certain situations like that is a big thing. People who can't afford a PC and they have a really bad laptop or something. 
Um, like what happened to me? My 13920 run <laughs> where I lost tons of frames in Bowser, right? Um, I didn't have a, a setup. I was living in a place with a bedroom. It was so small. I couldn't fit a PC. It, it was very complicated. You know, and people have those situations. So you have to consider that too. So it's it's like a 50-50 on that tweet that Carl made because everyone has different situations as well. I guess the, the last point for me is if you have this rule that you have to have direct capture, what do you do when you pick up this video? Let's say someone sends you a, v, a, 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 a VHS video and it's someone getting a 135 in Super Mario 64. Let's just say, pretend that that world exists. And it's, you can verify it exactly, right? You can verify everything looks perfect on the video. The audio is amazing. And it's a 135, right? World-changing run. What do you do with that video now? We just pretend this doesn't exist, right? Because it wasn't direct capture. That doesn't go number one in the world on the leaderboards because it doesn't follow the rule of direct capture. Why? Yeah, I, I don't. You know I don't mean? think that should be a rule. I think it's fine for it to be the world record. Yeah. I don't. I don't really think that that should be part of it. Mm -hmm. But it should be strongly encouraged <clears throat> because, it's like, at the end of the day, people have situations. So it's like, <clears throat> if they have the record, they have the record. Yeah, yeah. That's I would agree with that. I would agree that it. I, I would agree it should still be a rule record no matter what. Um, and once it is proven to not be fake and it is a real run, it should be worth record no matter what. But yeah, I mean, if you can uh, try to improve your quality and stuff, I mean, go for it. I think it is important uh, <clears throat> because if you don't care much about, oh, I don't care about my stream or whatever, I don't want to stream full time, but people care about seeing a world record. People care about seeing you play and uh, seeing a new world record for a game. So... Um, I feel like that's worth caring about, at least uh, the people who care about you. I, th I think that was Carl's oh, point, right? right. He, he's caring about this, the, the exposure yeah. of speedrunning as a whole, right? He doesn't care about the individual person. But now there might be less news places that pick this story up because the video is so bad. That's what he's talking about, right? Right. Yeah, so right. it's something to talk about. I, I, I think agree, we all agree there that if any run should be a lot, should be, if it's a world record run, it can be verified 100%, unlike Cheese's run, by the way, the new one. Uh, <laughs> it should be on the leaderboards okay. for sure because I think leaderboards are our list of facts and there, there's the facts. But uh, all right, guys, that's the show. Any 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 uh, last 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 thoughts we want to bring up? Last topics here. We got about three minutes left, but we got to get out of here. So geez, yeah, I, I would I would I would touch into my new world record because people are wondering a lot. Why is my what's going on with my new world record video? Uh, it's not verified. Uh, it's not going to be verified on speedrun.com. I personally still don't really understand the verification thing on speedrun.com, why it's necessary. I'm sure they have their reasons because they, the moderators and stuff, they, they come. I mean, they work hard at that. So they, I'm sure there's a reason for the verification process, right? Or why it exists. So it would never be verified? Uh, Hold on. It would never be verified. It probably, no, it won't be verified. It's just like my 13920 run because there was a moment in JRB when my catch card froze for 25 seconds. And uh, I just had to, like, when I opened OBS, it unfroze. Um, so it was, I had no idea. I, it was happening for like three days, right? At least once a day, it would just freeze randomly. And I just open OBS and it unfreezes. And I had no idea why that was happening. And it happened in my world record run. Um, wow. And because of that, they can't verify the run. Um, and this is, this is a special issue again. Like, where I, I bought, I spent 200 bucks for this. HD catcher card that I was recommended heavily on Twitter. I bought an HDMI N64 for like 300 bucks, so much money, and I'm having these little issues, and my run can't be verified, right? But I can't be mad because, again, they put so much time into these this rule system. I understand. And um, knowing that I was going for a world record this um in a game like Mario 64, I should have known that I should have made sure that I should make sure that my capture is always working properly. And I, I should have just used it, used my SD capture with the GV USB 2 that I know works properly. Um, so it was my fault in a sense that if I knew my HD was still giving problems, I should not have used it going forward record. So it is, it is my fault as well. With that said, so, I think I, I fixed my HD setup because I was using an adapter for the HDMI N64. Now I'm not. I bought a different cable and it seems to be working fine. So hopefully it's fixed. So <laughs> was it like AMREC crashing or the software crashed or what no, happened? It, uh, so the N64, HDMI N64 uses a mini HDMI port. So I use a normal HDMI cable with an, a mini HDMI adapter. Uh, a little adapter that changes from normal HDMI to mini HDMI, and that plugs into N64. 
And it seems as though that the, that adapter is what was giving issues. So instead of using the adapter, I just bought an HDMI to mini HDMI cable. So I'm not using an adapter anymore. And since then, it seems to be working fine. So it seems as though the adapter was the issue. It just was breaking connection with my HD capture card. I mean, that's pretty um, big news, though. I mean, that run will not go on leaderboards because of that 25 seconds ago. It's on leaderboards. It's okay. on leaderboards, but it would not be verified. Okay, I, th- I like so that So you would see all the runs be verified. It would have the tick for verified, but mine won't. That's why I don't really understand much what the verification is for. Maybe it's just kind of like a, <clears throat> a disclaimer for people who would potentially ask the question at the end oh look there was a problem in the video why is this um run accepted if they had this crash and maybe that's the process the reason for the verified thing <clears throat> but it will be it's still on the leaderboards that seems like a good a good answer right because i mean obviously you didn't cheat it it was done live uh i mean i guess there's some m- miracle thing you could have done he's but... cheated it dude he definitely <laughs> cheated. Yeah, I, yeah, just, gotta, just look at him who did Please. you get to do the Bowser throws? You know, give it to someone else. <laughs> go, 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 No, I'm go. just pretending to be stupid, and I know how to splice really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But all right, guys, shout-outs <laughs> time. Biggest shock. Shout-outs time. Simply let it go. Shout-outs. Sh- shout-outs, LimCube. I love that man. He is popping <laughs> off, getting it popping on Twitch. So I'm happy to see my boy, fellow commentator out there from GSA going off. Shout-outs, GSA. Shout-out Season 2. It has started. We've got World Record Wednesday rolling right now, I believe, and it's popping off. So that's my shout-outs. Shout-outs to, shout outs to, to, to Sims shout-outs. Cheese, shout-outs. <laughs> shout-outs to ESA for that great event and for making me always want to go back now. And shout-outs to TGH. I hope he gets through that community stuff because <laughs> um, it's difficult and um, shout outs to all streamers that try to stream professionally and do get issues at times with viewers talking smack hope you get over it and see the light of the day <laughs> shout outs to jesus shout outs uh, my shout outs again i was gonna say tjh too you stole mine just so you know, no one can hate you unless you're the best. So that if someone hates you, you know you're the best, my friend. So I uh, just right. try to try to take solace in that. Uh, shout outs to Eden Off coming on the show. Shout outs to shout outs to ESA, GSA, Carl Jobs. Who else do we talk about on the show? Everybody, I love everybody. Shout outs to speedrunning. Shout outs to world record culture. Shout outs to everything. <laughs> See ya in Thank two you. weeks. Bye.